Right, I'm going to try and explain the most frustrating machine in the world um, and what I think has happened. Right, so right now, so my wife's parked this thing up here, walked away from it, absolutely fine. I've come back to it, started it up. Um, it's had a bit of a weird start sequence because the ignition key was all crispy and crappy. So I've just replaced that. Uh, old one is somewhere. That's it. It's pretty much a like for like. It's gone in there. So that was almost like preventative because it was just a bit crappy. You'd have to hold the key just in the right position for it to be able to start. Anyway, not in the equation anymore. Uh, what was the other thing? Right, so the scenario is, is you can start it. The engine starts, not a problem. The uh, articulation works here, not a problem. Uh, lifty, lifty. Tilty, tilty, tilty thing. It's all good. That's fine. The only thing it won't do is it won't go forwards and backwards. So you kind of think, okay, what's that all about? Right. So there's a major pump here on the front of the engine. This is the main one that um, drives all four wheels and it's like all wheel drive. So from this point onwards, once the pump's doing its thing and pumping liquid down the various tubes and everything, it goes to each of the drive motors and that's it. There's no other intelligence in it. All four wheels move at the same time, so it's like an all-wheel drive. There is a solenoid here on top. Well, when I say solenoid, it's that thing there. Let me walk around it. I think it's actually just a connector, similar to what we've seen on top of the mechanism that controls all of this. And they are in there. Okay, there's four of them. Can I point without moving the camera thing? That one, that's one there. Two, three, four. They've got these square blocks on the top. And then of course, there's one here as well. So I think they're like some sort of cutoff valve things. So they don't control, they don't enable and disable as far as I know, the flow. There's one, two. Uh, can't see three, but it's there somewhere in the mud, in the muck. In fact, that is it in the middle of the screen. Focus, focus. That is it there in that. It's very dark in there. There's my finger. Whoop. It's there. And that's the fourth one. Uh, anyway, so I think a while back we had issues that that one there has got like a little bit of plastic cracked on the top and water ingress there meant that the fuses were popping on here. So I've now replaced all those fuses. I was bypassing them in the past with these kind of things. Uh, but they've actually been replaced with proper ones, look. They're quite cheap, about eight pounds each. That one I haven't done yet, which is why it's running off of this thing. So, I'm just kind of thinking it's going to be electrical again, because everything was working, uh, except for the drive forwards and backwards. Now, what do I know about this thing? When you push this forwards and backwards, um, pretty much everything on here is electrical, all of these. This uh, is a physical thing. If I yank that forwards and backwards and look down here, is that moving? Oh, this. Right, so that lever is opening and allowing fluid to either flow through one way or the other way. So that's what's controlling forwards and backwards. So if it's physical to there, you kind of think, well, it must be a mechanical issue. However, I think this block here on top, am I pointing at the thing? It's a thing in the middle of the screen there. Now inside there, there's a wire there somewhere. Orange and white. See that? It's through that translucent case. I think it's some kind of like holding thing or like emergency brake or something that irrespective of this lever is going forwards or backwards, this is saying, oh, I don't care, shut, off, shut it off. And it's, it's basically just going, don't move anywhere unless I release. So maybe it's just some sort of like it, I don't know, it holds a valve open or something. What's that doing there? Hmm. Yeah, it's holding a valve open or something to to stop any pressure from going forwards or backwards. Maybe that's how it works. Don't really know. Remember that orange and white wire, which is inside that block. Uh, 
There's the dock. There. It's inside there, orange and white. And what I can see from the cabling is it goes round through here, hooks back round underneath here and up here. And lo and behold, I found out that somebody else has been in here before me. And strangely, look at that, they've bypassed the orange and white, or more, more importantly, white with an orange. And it's like, okay, interesting. So maybe they've been sniffing around the same problem. I've then discovered a really bad live here. I'm pointing at the right thing, there, that comes through. Now that's me, I've bypassed it, look, here. So I've still got um, a, like a bullet connector here, but this physical wire, because this connector's knackered, I've literally just hooked around it. So someone else has done one before, and I've done one now. This, I think these are notoriously um, vulnerable to moisture ingress. Because inside here, look at the state of it. It ain't pretty. Now, luckily, there's not a lot of intelligence inside this thing. The most intelligence it's got, I think, is when you turn it on, there's this, like, like, I think this is like an internal like bank of two relays, something like that. So when you turn it on, what you're looking for is a little red light there. If you don't get a red light, that's probably because you're not sat on that thing there, the chair. Um, or it might be that that lever there isn't in the middle position. So in order for it to start, they call it an anti-start, which is a real weird way of explaining it. But what you need in order to start is this located in the middle and there's micro switches down there ticking away. If I was to turn the um, just ignition on, but don't start it. If I was to move this lever towards me, forwards and backwards I would hear the relays inside here firing so you'd hear them go click as I moved it over click forward click backwards so there's a the only intelligence I can kind of fathom out is when you first turn it on it does some sort of check at least once and you need that little red light there to light up you then keep turning the, to keep turning the key uh, and so you see like the um, diesel heaty light thing come on the coil light come on and this lights up. You keep turning it and it fires into life and that goes out and you just get left with that one on. I think that's the sequence. But irrespective of me finding these wiring faults here, uh, sorting that one out, um, literally going through all of these, I've massaged every single cable here. I've unpinned some of these cables, uh, especially the red ones, which are, which are somewhere. This one in my left hand, this one here looks a bit sketchy. See this just above my thumb? That one there was basically just, I could pull that cable straight out of the connector, stuff like that. So you have to open it up, push the pins out on the inside with the wire, sort of realign the little copper tab that's inside these pins and then push the pins back in and pull the plugs back together. So apart from like disconnecting everything and reconnecting everything, that's kind of all you can do. You can check the seat, you can do resistance check, you can jump up and down the seat. That seems to be working. Like I said, this is working because you can hear the relays firing whenever you move any of this stuff. So it's a bit frustrating, really. Um, couldn't actually work out what was going on until, now I hope, I've got a resolution. This being like the only bit of logic, apart from some very simple relays in here, I kind of thought, well, all right, let's have a look around this thing. Now what I've just done is I've just disconnected to have a look and lo and behold, I, I'm, I, I'm, hope, I'm hoping I'm lucky here, right? Because cause that, that don't look right. I mean, I don't think there's any connectivity there, but equally, you know what? I have got no idea what that does. So what I'm hoping is that this is just sorted out on something. I mean, it's green, it's clearly oxidized to some degree. And I am hoping that at the end of this video, there'll be a little thing that says, that was it. So I'm about to disconnect this one here. I might connect it temporarily, just as a test to see how it behaves. I might just jam it in there, jam. Let's check it out. Anyway, if that has solved this problem, I would be so grateful because I've got a lot of bloody stones to move around. 
and I really don't fancy doing it with a digger, like tracking it forwards and backwards all the time. And I've got a lot to do. So I'm just gonna push this stuff in. We're back after this break. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I've just jammed that wire in there. Jam. There's the pretty lights, there's the pretty lights. Okay. Ignition. Oh, there's the movement. So this is me moving this lever to the left and then back. Okay, right middle. Right, ready? Whoop. I'm gonna go and listen at the same time as watching. There we go. Right, listen, going to the left. Back to the back to the middle again. The left. Back to the middle. And down there, I'm not sure if you can hear it. Left, back again. Left, back again. Okay, so relays are definitely firing. Left, back again. I'll lift my beautiful arse off this seat. Oh, I'm gonna get cramped. Oh, that's awkward. Oh, okay. Okay. Off the seat. Left. Ready? Left. Back again. Left. Back again. Okay. So, one red light. Sat back on the seat. Left. Right. So there's something tying these two things together. This and this. What does that mean? I don't know. Poppy, don't come over here now. You ain't going to like this. Right, so I'm sat on the seat. Lever is in the middle. I'm going for the key. I'm going to turn it off to start with, all right? Because the check seems to happen when we turn it on. Right. Key on there, and then that'll be glow plug right now, and I keep turning it. Turn it up and we're off. Oh my God. Oh my god. Oh. Good grief. Right. This is taking me about, I don't know, seven days of being depressed. I hate not being able to fix stuff. I hate it because I'm not very smart. So when I do manage to do stuff, I'm a happy bunny. This, I just couldn't suss, couldn't suss it out. Oh my gosh, right, putting that bloody thing back in there, I'll, um, do you know, I'm almost tempted to hardwire this brown, this brown one I've kind of bodged for the moment. Um, yeah, okay, so this brown one's sticking in here, look, this, this is just pushed in there. Am I pointing at the right thing? Oh. Right. So it's there, that's my bodge. That brown one was just, just pushed in to make contact with this brown one. So that one, might as well get hardwired straight into that brown one there and I'll just bypass this plug, I think. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm so pleased. I've checked all of this stuff so many bloody times. Ah. Oh. All right, anyway, I'll share this. Well, I don't know what I'm sharing, but you know, that was really easy to swap, by the way. This cost about, Again, it was like eight or nine pounds, I think, for that thing. It was just, it made sense to do it. That's just a counter. I don't know what's underneath there. Bank of relays along here. And then it's just fuse, fuse, fuse. Um, a buzzer. Fuse, fuse, fuse. A buzzery thing. And of course, the, the stop thing. So, right, I'm putting it back together. Ah! Oops. I'm sure I ordered some things to hold my phone while I'm doing this stuff. This is the bottom foot plate on the dumper. There's two bolts on the top. There's two at the front. There's one here at the side. There's one on the other side. And uh, that's it. This, this one I'm doing now, it's actually got a nut on the back end. 
actually a nylock by the feel of it, but it's got enough give in it that I can hold it by hand. And then that back plate, boop, uh, has got at least four bolts. It may have had six once upon a time, but I've already got four. Uh, they don't have bolts on the back. There's already, oh Jesus. Uh, what's it like, encapsulated nuts back there. So these are gonna have to hold. cack -handed. I'm just going to get the gun, but I've left it indoors, I think. I actually don't know where it is. Uh, anyway, it was uh, it was a great success. A success, yes. Uh, it was that wire that was going into the anti-start module, which it just corroded away or shorted out on something to absolutely nothing left. So I bypassed it and I've tested the vehicle. It moves forwards, it moves backwards. Okay. I don't think I can do that one anymore. Oh, jeez. No. So, that's it. All working again, all back together. Even the lights work. These lovely little switches. I've put some really crap, um, what's it called, Gorilla Tape on here. Look, just to stop any water from going into that buzzer kind of thing. I think this vehicle, because of this control box here, which apparently is some sort of limited functionality, apparently they moved this lever here up onto here at some point and put a pedal on it. I don't quite know what that means. Faster, slower, forwards, backwards, I think. Uh, because this thing's a pile of rubbish. What a pile of rubbish. It's just a sucker for moisture, look at it. Uh, so I'm kind of inclined to always keep this parked under here. I've just noticed my roof up there is like hanging down. Look, see those? Yeah. That was a really stupid thing to do, wasn't it? That was a mistake. Why has it done that? Yeah, okay. Never mind. Anyway, this whole thing's supposed to be temporary anyway. So so that's it, I think. This should be we should be back in action and I can start shifting all the stones, like all this sort of stuff, look. I need to make more of this by bashing this with the sledgehammer. Any of these big slate rocks here, just smash them down to cover this whole area. And then I've got literally tons, tens, maybe hundreds of tons of the stuff up there in the quarry that I need to bash by hand as well. And while I'm here then, so this one, this one, there's a nut on the back. Do you know what a nut looks like? One there, one there, one there, one there. One here on the side, on this plate, because this whole plate's gonna come off. And uh, one on the far side. And it makes sense to take that plate there off. You take this one off first, and then that one will come off. And then it'll expose all the solenoids and stuff in there. It's nice and simple. Right, that's it. Gonna uh, just do up these final couple of bolts. Tidy up, let's get this thing doing some work. Later, taters.